And I want to offer a special thank you to everybody in the congregation who stepped forward to make, to make donations to help us with all of this technology, which costs a lot of money. And as you know, we're all facing all different kinds of budget cuts and concerns about finances at the very time that we need to be able to do things so that we can all be together. So even small amounts, very small amounts, we're very, very, very grateful for at this time. And I know several of you in the congregation have really come forward to make sure that we can do this so that uh, we can get, keep building our connection together. Um, well, there's so much to say, and I'm going to be, uh, try to be brief. We are in this, this Shabbat in our season is called Shabbat Hagadol, the great Shabbat. And I joke every year that one of the reasons, there are many reasons it's called Shabbat HaGadol, and one of the reasons is that this was the Shabbat on which the rabbi gave the biggest and longest sermon. So it was known as the Long Shabbat Sermon. So I will spare you that, I hope, uh, but I'm going to take a rain check on that because I do like giving long sermons, but tonight is not the night for that one. The Shabbat HaGadol always comes on the Shabbat before Pesach. Tonight it's the 10th of Nisan. It's not always the 10th of Nisan, but it's always right before Pesach. The 10th of Nisan is special because in our tradition, it's the birth date, I mean, it's the death date of Miriam. And we have a special relationship to Miriam on the 10th of Nisan, which is the Shabbat. But where we are now in this cycle of our year, the Shabbat before Pesach, as we prepare these days to go into Pesach in the most bizarre circumstances, perhaps we who are alive have found ourselves uh, in that we're all separated. What does it mean to prepare our homes and our hearts for Pesach? What does it mean to prepare to enact and reenact leaving from Egypt when so many of us feel we're in our own forms of oppressive life circumstances? I've spoken to so many of you, some of whom are living back with your parents when you had expected at this point in your life to not ever live with your parents again. And it's a, an experience that is difficult for everybody. Uh, some who are living alone feel tremendous isolation and a sense of real separation from human beings. And, as, and some of uh, you who are living with a partner are experiencing marital and relationship issues where with no possibility of getting breathing room. Some are living with small children, some with teenagers, and we're all being tested in the environments in which we're living in different ways. And we're entering the season in which we're asking for God's blessings as we remember our ancestors, those on whose shoulders we stand, who had it really bad. The slaves who left from Egypt and were told to think every year, that every season of Pesach, we're told we're supposed to try and remember what it felt like to leave Egypt and to seek towards freedom. Different traditions of our people do that in different ways. Some Sephardi traditions, really people reenact the actual physical move at the Seder itself. The Persian Jewish tradition, which we did at CBST with our Persian Jews one year, is to take long leeks and beat everybody at the table with the leeks so that the smell really is the smell of Pesach and it becomes quite an activity. You might want to consider doing it. It's, it's more fun than it probably should be, but it, and it creates a wonderful aroma for the Seder. But here we are in these moments of feeling such deep isolation and we're trying to imagine our people leaving from a moment of oppression of narrowness and experiencing liberation. I think for us this year, we have to connect to our ancestors in ways that not all of us do. In this Parsha of Tzav, there are many different elements of it. And by the way, also Shabbat HaGadol we're told that on Shabbat afternoon, it's traditional to study the Haggadah, to take it out, to dust it off if you haven't looked at it yet, and to start reading it through and imagining the Seder itself. Well, this year, our Seder is going to be Zoomed. We're not going to be sitting at big tables full of people. We are going to be sitting, I'm going to be leading a Seder, and all are welcome to join us. You have to bring your own, your own Seder plates. 
And we sent out an email this day to everybody. And if you didn't get up, let us know and we'll send it to you with a link to a Haggadah that you can download that we'll be using for the Seder. And you can start preparing for it by studying that Haggadah. But how do we manage to move through these years, this Pesach? And for me, it's about remembering these ancestors of ours really genuinely. The ancestors who lived in slavery for 400 years before the moment of liberation. We've been now in the, the narrow places, the slavery perhaps, the, na the oppressive experience for, what has this been, two or three weeks? Maybe four weeks? I don't even remember. Can we even remember? We, this is the third Shabbat service that we're doing exclusively from our homes. Four weeks ago, we live streamed from the sanctuary with almost nobody in the room. So really a month since we've really started doing any kind of elbows instead of handshakes. Remember the gradual nature in a very compressed amount of time to this place in which half of the Earth's population, half of the Earth's population, four billion people are living as all of us are right now, sheltering in whatever homes they might have. And some are not very comfortable homes. Half of the Earth's people are sharing this experience of exile right now. A half of all humanity are right now in this sense of exile as we face this moment of Pesach. We're facing a death rate here in New York City that's terrifying to us. Soon before the service tonight, for those of us in New York City, we got an action alert asking for any medical professionals who could volunteer to help with the crisis of medical, uh, the medical uh, facilities here in the city. The Jacob Javits Center, where we usually have our High Holy Day services, have 2,500 beds ready to, ready to receive COVID patients. So how do we, for me, this Pesach, what does Pesach have to teach me this year? We say all the time, Lador Vador, from generation to generation. And usually when we say the phrase from Lador Vador, it's full of a, a positive emotion. We, we feel so moved that we're passing the traditions of our people from one generation to the next. And I, I weep when I watch our young people emerging into young adults and I imagine them taking over from us as they should be, be, be in their time when things are appropriate. But I think Lador Vador, which is a very big part of Pesach, of teaching them, of telling the next generation, of telling the story of our people, is to tell the story of our ancestors who had it harder than we do. To take time this Pesach at this Seder and through this season, to think of those ancestors of ours who were slaves for 400 years, we're now in this particular moment for weeks. How did they maintain ability to keep going on to the future of imagining a future in which all of us, Joyce and Judy and I and all of you would exist? How did they not just give up? Or think of our ancestors who were expelled from Spain and left with nothing after hundreds of years of living on the Iberian Peninsula and building a rich, and a vibrant culture, and they left with nothing. They did not give up. They created great culture, and they created a foundation on which we build. And we remember them when we sing Lecha Dodi. But how do we remember them inside of us, teaching us? What would they be saying to us right now? We think of our ancestors in the pogroms in Eastern Europe. We think of those ancestors who left Europe traveled to England or to South Africa or to Australia or to Palestine, what would they be saying to us today? We think of our ancestors who died in the Shoah, in the camps or in the Einsatzgruppen murdering machines in the fields and forests of Poland and of Russia and of Latvia and Lithuania and Belarus and Yugoslavia, and Czechoslovakia. What would those ancestors of ours say to us right now? Lador Vador, what would their messages be to us? 
כל דור ודור חייב אדם לראות את עצמו כאילו הוא יצא ממצרים. Every generation we're told, we're supposed to imagine we're the ones who have gone out. And maybe what that's teaching us about this year is that we're supposed to remember the ones who did come out in years past and imagine what they're saying to us now. And we're also, Lador Vador, supposed to remember the ones who didn't make it out, but want to see us make it through. Bimkom she'ino ish hishta del ish. In a place where there is no humanity, we're told by our tradition of the Pirkei Avot, of the Mishnah, of the ancestors, where, the, and if you find yourself in a place where humanity has disappeared, your job is not to in, imitate those who are degraded and act as if they were immoral, amoral human beings. Our job is to be even more moral. Our job is to be even more the human being that God has created. When we listen to a Stephen Miller or a Jared Kushner, where Cheryl, Shelley Adelson talk about their vision of what this country should look like, we have to insist on our vision by living every moment with the deepest sense of humanity that we have. And I believe we have to be strengthened by those ancestors, Lador Vador. We need to reach back to the zechut of our ancestors, our individual ancestors, and we all can think of the ones we are standing on whose shoulders we stand tonight, those grandparents or parents or caregivers or aunts or uncles or an adult who reached out to us at an important moment in our life and because of them we are alive. We need them to be, we need to be talking to them right now. They might not be alive and most of them are not, but we need to ask them to pray for us and to give us wisdom. And I believe by understanding that we stand on their shoulders, we will strengthen our shoulders for those young people who are out there now, for those who are not yet in our world to stand on our shoulders. The door of our door, from generation to generation, let us be strengthened by our ancestors. Spend some time in this Pesach season thinking of those in your past those you know and those you don't know, and what wisdom they will be giving you now. And you will take in your little pekelech as we go on our journey from uncertainty to uncertainty, but knowing we're part of an important tradition that believes in the wisdom of the exile so that we can one day come home. Shabbat Shalom. I look forward to joining everybody for the Seder on Wednesday night. Uh, Shabbat Shalom and have a Zisin Pesach, have a sweet Pesach full of sweetness wherever you are, whatever your condition is. Shabbat Shalom.